What would you say is the scariest moment a piece of media has ever made you experience? Maybe it was the first time you saw a horror movie at an age you weren't supposed to. Perhaps it was a particularly bad jump scare in a game you played. Or maybe it was from a series which wasn't even inherently meant to be horror. As someone who is very passionate about the horror genre and someone who admittedly scares very easily, I feel like at one point I would have had a very difficult time answering that question. However, Recently I had the pleasure of experiencing a game which featured quite possibly the most horrifying sequence I have ever seen from any horror game. And if you've read the title of this video, then you know that game is Resident Evil Village. I had put this game off for quite a while because of how different it looked from the typical RE experience that I tend to enjoy, but after playing through RE4 Remake I had gotten into a massive Resident Evil kick, replaying older games in the series and trying out ones I hadn't gotten around to. This was what eventually led to me trying RE8 for the first time, and all I have to say is that I hate myself for not playing this amazing game sooner. I loved every minute of RE8. The locations in the game were absolutely beautiful, the characters and enemies were among some of the most creative I'd seen from the series, and of course, it had a section that terrified me to my core. The specific section which I'm referring to is one that we experience a little less than halfway through the game. By the time I'd arrived in it, I wasn't expecting much in the way of horror. Sure, Castle Dimitrescu had some wonderful moments and being pursued by Lady Dimitrescu herself was very stressful, but I would never say that I was downright terrified. These expectations ended up being my downfall once I'd left the castle though, because with them in mind I could never predict the kind of raw terror I would experience the moment I opened the doors to House Beneviento. So without further ado, let's talk about that. The House Beneviento section begins as we open the gates and make our way through an ominous forest filled with dolls hanging from ropes, an imagery immediately alluding to the location's heavy themes of childbirth and parenthood. We see strollers along the road, hallucinations of our character's wife Mia, and in order to gain access to the house itself we must give up a photo of our lost daughter. This setup makes it so these themes are fresh in the player's mind as we make our way towards the house, making us question how and why we're seeing these things as we prepare for what's to come. And speaking of the house, once we reach the end of the forest and finally arrive at House Beneviento itself, we also find ourselves in the first part of the sequence which really disturbed me, and it may not even be obvious right away what that is. You see, prior to this part of the game, every single setting in Ari Village shared a similar characteristic, that being the large-scale grandiose feeling of everywhere we went. By this point in the game, we'd fought our way through a ransacked village of lichen, ventured through a massive gothic castle filled to the brim with monsters and vampires, and after all that we heard tales of Donna's dollhouse, a location where no one ever returns. And yet once we finally arrive at this supposedly horrific location, we're greeted by a humble, almost calming environment. The house itself is neat and mundane, with no clear signs of any threat anywhere to be seen, and on top of that it finds itself situated on a beautiful view right in front of a waterfall on a cliffside. Up to this point this was easily the most relaxing and comforting location in all of RE Village, and that set off so many red flags in my head the second I walked in. With the other, more overtly scary areas in the game, they made it clear right from the moment you entered who and what the present threats were. You knew about the Lycan and what they could do. You knew about Lady Demetresk and her daughters hunting you. The game made these threats very apparent from the moment you entered these locations. But in this peaceful, serene house, you have no idea what to expect. You know something is going to happen here. It's a Resident Evil game after all. 
but you don't know what it will be or when it will happen. As we explore the house deeper, we eventually make our way down into the basement where most of our time here will be spent. We step through a pair of doors which have faint music heard playing behind them, and are greeted to a room with many different dismembered doll parts hanging from the ceiling, as well as the vial we came here for conveniently placed right in the middle of it all. Of course, going into this, we know retrieving it isn't going to be that easy, but we take it anyway thinking we can take on whatever the game throws our way. And then, it does this. What? Wait, where's my gun? Just like that, any suspicions or concerns we had while venturing through this house are validated in the worst way possible, as all of our weapons are taken from us without any warning. This right here, this single event, was something that allowed for House Beneviento to pull off a kind of horror unseen from this game up to this point. It's one thing for a horror game to give the player no means of defense right from the get-go, but it's another thing entirely for it to provide you with all the tools necessary to survive, only to have them taken away forcefully. Resident Evil games were always about creating stressful situations where you faced off against enemies with the limited supplies you had, fearing for when you would run out of those supplies and become entirely defenseless. This single event essentially forces that worst case scenario on the player, now making it so that any threat that may appear while we're here is infinitely more threatening than they ever would be if we had the means to fight them and it's this looming dread over our heads which carries the horror of this sequence as we make our way through each room attempting to solve the escape room-esque puzzles it presents. Every little scare, every moment where we're forced to make our way into the unknown, knowing fully that there may be something we can't fight waiting for us, it all builds towards an overwhelming tension that lasts for the entirety of the sequence until it inevitably reaches its climax as the lights go out and we stand before a red, bloodied room. This moment. This moment is what the entirety of House Beneviento has been building to. This moment where we stand before a pitch black hallway, where a subtle droning ambience begins to build and we're forced to stare down a darkness so intense we can barely see two feet in front of us. This is what will either make or break a horror sequence, the moment where the game tries its best to deliver on what all the suspense has been leading to in a way that doesn't ruin or cheapen the overall experience. And I'm sure you guessed from the title of this video and the way I've been talking about it up to this point that what you're about to see absolutely succeeds on the delivery of this climax. I could describe what happens next, but I feel like nothing I could say would properly do justice to the absolute terror that is this moment. So I'll let it play out, and allow you to see how Resident Evil Village created the perfect horror sequence. Do I even need to describe to you why this is the most frightening moment I have ever experienced playing a game? I feel like it's very self-explanatory, but I do have a lot to say about it, so I'll try my best to put it into words. This moment to me feels like the absolute culmination of every single element that was put into play from the moment we stepped foot in House Beneviento. 
all of the foreshadowing and symbolism alluding to the overall theme of parenthood and childbirth, the sudden loss of our weapons, the many moments where we're forced to go somewhere knowing full well that something may be waiting for us in the darkness, it all comes together in this one perfect sequence where all that build-up and tension is paid off in the most gruesome and horrific fashion possible. This giant fetus is the scariest monster I have ever had the displeasure of looking at. Its warped, vaguely humanoid appearance mixed with its sheer size and gaping maw make it so viscerally wrong to look at. It feels like it shouldn't exist, and yet here it is taking up the entirety of the hallway when we have no means of defense, forcing us to find somewhere, anywhere we can to escape it. And it's not just the overtly grotesque appearance of the baby which makes this particular part of the game so terrifying to play. There are many other smaller details at play here which build upon it to make it all the more dreadful. There are two main ones I'd like to key in on, those being the soundtrack and our character himself. The music which accompanies this moment perfectly complements everything it's trying to do. It's this loud, droning cacophony of noise created by several instruments which sound as though they're trying desperately to mimic the sound of human cries as the baby slowly crawls its way towards you. I have never found myself more disturbed by a track in my entire life. It creates such an overwhelming sensation of fear that at times during my original playthrough, it had actually brought me to near tears when I heard it. The second detail I'd like to focus on, and the one I find the most fascinating, is how our character, Ethan, reacts every single time this monster appears. You see, Ethan's character, despite being one who constantly finds himself in horrifying situations, is one who very rarely expresses fear towards what faces him. In almost every other situation we see him in throughout the entirety of RE8, usually he has something to say about it, whether it be some kind of quip or expression of irritation. He faces down monsters that are far greater than him and actively defies those who attempt to talk down to him. It's part of what makes me love him so much as a character. But when we see him in the dollhouse, when he stares down the monster at the end of the hall, this is how he reacts. <laughs> this is the only sequence in the entire game where Ethan has nothing to say. All we ever hear from him when this monster appears is the faint sound of him gasping for air and faintly screaming in fear. And to me, there is something so genuinely scary about that. The fact that this moment is the only one where we see our character, just like us, is really, truly terrified. No quips, no banter, nothing. Just silence. And of course, putting atmosphere and design aside, the actual gameplay of this sequence does a wonderful job at setting everything seen here in motion. As well as allowing for proper tension to be built leading up to the chase, the moments where we're left to explore the house without any present threat make it so that we're able to familiarize ourselves with our environment without even realizing it will be integral later. 
We can find multiple places throughout the house which act as hiding spots later without even knowing that's their purpose until they come into play, and the time we spend exploring allows us to subconsciously learn our own escape route by the time the actual monster appears to chase us. These moments allow for the wonderful building of suspense while also giving the player a proper, fair chance to escape once the sequence reaches its climax, making for something that is terrifying without becoming annoying. These hiding spots also get the opposite effect later on once we know the baby is now roaming the house somewhere looking for us, with each new hiding spot we find reminding us that it could appear at any given moment to give chase, even when it seems like we've lost it. Perhaps the greatest example of how the gameplay comes into play to add to this sequence's horror is seen at the very end of it as we place the fuse in the elevator to escape. At this moment, we convince ourselves that this horrible nightmare we've been thrown into is finally at an end, only to be forcefully thrown back into it at the last second as we realize we must painstakingly wait for the elevator to come back down while hearing the baby slowly approaching us from behind. Sitting there and waiting for that elevator, knowing what is behind you, is a moment that will always get me no matter how many times I replay the game. I know for a fact that standing there in front of the elevator will always allow for it to open right before the baby catches you, yet despite that there is always a horrible thought at the back of my mind where I tell myself, it's gonna get you right before you open that door. I know this kind of scenario has been done before in other horror games, but I just feel like the way this game in particular does it is so much more effective because of everything that comes prior. There is no better feeling in the world than finally seeing that door open and running inside to safety. It's an amazing end to an absolutely perfect sequence. As we make our way back to the surface, there's only one challenge left in House Beneviento that we must face before we're finally able to leave, and that is of course Donna herself. This final fight between Donna and Ethan, while not being nearly as scary as the sequence prior, is a great send-off to this location and the horrors it presented. It's a stressful race against the clock as we try our hardest to find Angie among the many dolls scattered through the house, all the while a disturbing track plays over the entire thing which is actually a French song about playing hide and seek. Once we finally catch Angie for the final time, we stab her in the head with a pair of scissors we brought from the basement, and it's revealed that the one we were really chasing through the house was Donna herself, who had been making Ethan hallucinate using her powers. This reveal works to me for three main reasons. The first, and most obvious, is the fact that it brings into question what in the house was real and what was a result of Ethan's imagination. Some things being a mere trick of the mind makes a lot of sense, but things like the baby which can actively kill us? It brings a lot into question overall makes everything we've gone through more mysterious. The second thing, which I feel makes the overall fight more fascinating at the end, is the fact that it being a hallucination implies that what's really going on here is that Ethan is chasing Donna through her own home, with her desperately hiding as he attempts to find and murder her. And that segues into the third thing that sticks out to me, which admittedly may be me overanalyzing this whole game, but I still find it interesting. That being the fact that when the illusion fades, Ethan is no longer holding the pair of scissors we saw him holding prior. Now, this could just be a simple oversight on the part of the devs, but there's a part of me that is so freaked out by the possibility that Ethan quite literally killed Donna with his bare hands at the end of this fight since he had no weapons to fight with. It's just a great send-off to an overall perfect area which puts everything we experienced into question as we finally leave House Beneviento and make our way through the rest of the game. This entire area to me is the absolute definition of what any horror game should strive to do in order to effectively scare the player. It sets itself up perfectly by juxtaposing what we've come to expect from the game, providing us with a deceptively safe environment that quickly turns sinister as our weapons are taken from us without warning. 
And as we try to escape this place with no tools to defend ourselves, we're forced to face a monster so viscerally frightening that it's overwhelming. House Beneviento is the most terrifying location and sequence I have ever experienced from the horror genre, and I feel as though it will stay that way for a very long time. With that said though, I'd love to know what you consider to be the scariest moment you've experienced from a piece of media. I find discussions like this so insanely fascinating, and I would love to see some other perspectives in the comments, whether it be anyone agreeing with me or having some fun stories of their own. Anyway though, that'll be all from me for now. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. It genuinely means the world to me to have you here to listen to me go on my little rants, and I would love to see you here again for whatever my next project ends up being. Goodbye for now.